Hello and welcome back to another episode of Octo Reacts and featuring everyone's favourite unionised octopus, me, the disgruntled octopus. Hello. And today, before we get into today's video, <laughs> let me tell you right now, things have gotten bad if I've got to come back, right? I thought I'd take a couple of days off, a couple of weeks off, you know, try and take over the world. But alas, no, Minion J hasn't been doing his job. And all the people in the comments have actually been saying, bring back the octopus. And, you know, well, hey, look, you've got nothing but, you know, to blame by yourself now because I'm back. So realistically today, we've actually had Michael, uh, one of our viewers, reach out a couple of weeks ago, but I've been slack on the, um, the old email, <laughs> so I finally got around to it. But we're going to do a reaction video to If It Ships, It Flips. Uh, he's a pretty brand new reseller from, or not reseller per se, but a, a fairly small YouTube channel, which is always good. I like promoting uh, other YouTube channels. Uh, big shout out to uh, Helo's World and Soda City Flips as well. I will put their links in the description below if you want to go over and slither over and check them out. But I'm not too sure of this gentleman's name, so I won't be able to. I'll just call him Blood, Sweat and Tears. <laughs> You'll find out a little bit in a second what I mean by that. Uh, so basically, long story short, he's had a return from a customer that didn't read the description. Uh, or the title for that matter from memory. Uh, so basically, this is something that, uh, from what I can gather from the piece he was talking about, is that it's like a mobile router in the States that uses one carrier or it's like locked to one carrier and the, the buyer tried to use it for a different carrier and bring it back from most different things. What I want to bring attention to now is that you need to take that component out of the equation and look at it from it from different things so a lot of things are region locked so dvds for example in australia won't play in the united states or canada um without appropriate dvd plays and all stuff on the lines of that dvd like video games you know they power lock some of them and all these different things so look at it from that perspective i want to bring attention to how buyers react and how they can circumvent the ebay's um, return structure so realistically um <laughs> personally me whenever i type in the little description field um to make sure all these different things i write the title and the description as if i'm speaking to the stupidest person in the world and you know i will put a little picture up here somewhere which what i deem the stupidest person in the world so obviously if you can if that person there can understand what i'm getting across that's perfect and that's the level you should be making all your descriptions and all your titles level that don't make it complicated don't be trying to be sneaky and hide things you will become undone so we're Without further ado, let's press play and let's talk to the blood, sweat, and tears. Okay. Once again, we have a return. This one I knew would probably come back because the moment the person got it, he messaged me and said it don't work with his T-Mobile Sims card. Now, the ironic part about this is, if you can notice, it's still sealed. It, you can see the tape. Um, the ironic part is, the first word in the description is Verizon. And that goes back to what I was saying before. Um, so when I do DVDs, yeah, maybe we'll use Killer Instinct. Oh, that's not a word. Cruel Intentions. We'll use that one. <laughs> Cruel Intentions is a movie. Uh, look at me go. So basically, I'll put uh, Australia, PAL, slash Region 4, and all these different keywords in the title to make sure that people you know, can understand that it's not necessarily going to be working across those. So realistically, when you're looking at selling items, DVDs, um, for example, video games, I'll just use those as I know them back to front. Um, you really need to take into consideration that the people that are obviously buying the product might necessarily know. They might just think they're getting a killer deal because that game in America might cost, you know, $300 and they can get it from Australia for $25, $30. But the thing is, though, if it's region locked, it won't work. So what I'll do is, like I said, put it in the title um, and also put it in the description field. And I'll probably will bring up one of the descriptions of mine if I can remember before I have to edit the video. Uh, so basically gives you an idea of what you need to do. So as a second line in the description, all right, this DVD is region four. It was only playable in Australia, New Zealand, etc. cetera. Um, you know, outside of these areas, a multi-regional DVD player may be required. So realistically, even from that perspective, it's not stopping anyone from putting in an iNet and eBay siding with them. So you really, really, really need to, you know, break it down to the lowest common denominator. I know a lot of people actually reach out to the buyer and say, hey, look, do you realize this is a PAL DVD or do you realize this is a PAL game? Something along the lines of that. Um, it might not work in America. And if they're really clueless, they'll actually ask to cancel the the, um, the sale or for, hypothetically, yeah, that's fine. I've got a multi-regional DVD player or I've got a 
a, a, a hacked 3DS, for example, um, that obviously they can provide evidence when you go to eBay and fight when they try and send a return item not received or not, not as described later on. Now, I don't know if these things coexist with other cellular carriers, but I do know that it is locked. I think, see, the, the blood, sweat, and tears right here. He's, he's the prime reseller, right? He's bald and he's got a magnificent beard. So <laughs> I, I do share the baldness with him. I just don't have a magnificent beard. So maybe um, reach out to me and I'll put his, his, uh, his video and uh, I suppose channel in the, in the description field below as well. But slide over and have a bit of a sub to him if you're that way inclined. To Verizon, because when you turn it on, it says, Welcome to Verizon. So we actually have similar things in Australia with our um, our low price mobiles. You know, if you're looking at buying a, a mobile phone from Woolworths or a supermarket or something like that, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're probably locked to a certain carrier. So yeah, you buy a Telstra mobile for $20, um, you're not going to be able to use Vodafone or Optus uh, because it's locked to that carrier. So this is what's basically happened in this situation. Now, it don't say that, but I have pictures that when you turn it on, it says Verizon. So the way I say pictures is worth a thousand words, but realistically, like I was saying, you need to like <laughs> go to the common denominator, like the lowest, lowest, lowest intelligence level in in on eBay, um, and obviously go from that perspective. If you put another card in there, will it work? Um, I don't know. I sent, yeah, there's the extra battery. So it got returned, I guess, in good shape. Let me see if I can turn it on and show you. It might not do nothing since the Sims card's sitting right there glit taped to it. Mm-hmm. I guess I left my Sims card in there. That's riveting YouTube viewing. <laughs> so it's good. No, but yeah, blood and sweat and tears. Oh, hang on. Hello. Oh, everybody. look. Oh, oh, Verizon. Right. And like I said, I took a picture of that screen and I. So I, I can't I watched this video about a week ago, right? So realistically, from my perspective, it's not good enough just to take a photo of the screen. Um, if that's your first photo, by all beans, you know, you can go from that perspective. But a lot of people, like I was saying, is that they don't draw the connection between the two. Uh, they might just think that, you know, Verizon's what comes up on the screen and they can still put their T-Mobile or whatever other SIM card in and it'll work fine. You really need to put it in your title, which I'm pretty sure he has, but he said that he just put Verizon in there. But that, people take that as the brand, right? You really need to put something in there. I would go a little step further and actually write Verizon, you know, mobile Wi-Fi, whatever it is. Uh, hyphen read description at all capitals um, to basically pushes them down from that perspective because the, if it, they're shopping on the mobile app, the description's hidden. It's eBay literally hides it now. You've got this little hyperlink that before, you know, basically that's what you need to click to bring out the description. First, like I said, the first word in the description. Yeah, here you go. Because here's the item. See? Yeah, so that, that, that's exactly what I was saying, right? So it says Verizon, Insectigo, uh, whatever, Hotspot, all those different things, extra battery. So this is not actually drawing attention to the fact that it, it's locked. I would have probably go Verizon locked or, you know, read description or something like this. You need to really bring it back to the, to the thing. So from this perspective, as much as I love blood, blood sweat, and tears, I think he might be in the wrong. I haven't checked the item out. I don't know what he's got in the description field, but what I was saying earlier is that you need to bring attention to it straight away in the title because people aren't looking at video, oh, sorry, photos. They're not looking at the description. They're looking at the title, looking at probably the first photo. Yeah, that's exactly what I want and go from there. So like I said, blood, sweat and tears, you need to be very mindful. Verizon. <clears throat> My five. It's a hot spot. Yeah. See? It is Verizon. 
when are we when are we as sellers you know they always say it's the cost of doing business well if that's the case when can we run our business the way we want to get a shopify account and that's what you gotta do so realistically as much as i agree with blood sweat and tears here i see what it really comes down to is that you accept the terms and conditions of ebay right i'm not shilling ebay i'm not saying i love ebay however when yeah, when the seller's wrong, in, in this sense, I think blood, sweat, and tears are probably just as wrong as his buyer. Um, I'd probably weight it more in against him personally. Um, but realistically, you you know, you're signing up for a platform. Yes, you're doing all those different things. We've spoken about it before regarding traffic. So it's, it sounds like a broken record. However, you sign up to eBay, you need to play by their rules. So, because hmm. I would have told this person, no. I don't care because it's exactly as described. Of course, that's what they use because that's how you can get it returned for nothing. And people know that. It's not like I'm giving out a secret. Yeah, so that's the world's worst kept secret, right? I was listening to Josh Galt, John, and Beard today on their podcast. And they're basically saying is that eBay should have like implement a system where when you raise an INAD, um, it actually goes through like a... Um, resolution center so it doesn't automatically give you the return label you actually have to prove that's not the return the item is described right so i think that ebay probably needs to look into that they won't so they get hold your breath because you'll probably go blue as <laughs> blue as anything so realistically like i say is you just need to bring attention to the fact is that like i said with blood sweat and tears here you know, his title was you know if you knew that product you knew what the system worked be fine however you need to really tailor tailor it to the low, lowest common denominator um verizon locked uh, redescription all these different things and you know re regurgitate it down in the description field so when you get to ebay and you know you can test the inab you say hey look it's written four or five times in the description it's also written in the, in the title this is no longer an item not as described it's actually the buyer's remorse so just be mindful of that great on that dishonest people will always say, oh, it was item not as described. You saw the thing. You saw it turn on. What did it say? Verizon. I don't know how much I can help you with that. Let me take over the world and I'll, I'll help you as much as you want, blood, sweat, and tears. You know, when am I going to be able to say, tough luck, sell it yourself? When you own eBay, <laughs> really, that's what it comes down to, right? Like, like I say, I, I don't hold no ill will against blood, sweat, and tears here, um, but realistically, that's what it comes down to. And there's a thing called shrinkage. You know, obviously, you need know, to take this in consideration. And like you were saying, with the cost of business and all these different things, you just need to be more mindful, right? Like, realistically, I know this guy's a an established seller. I'm pretty sure he showed himself. Um, in one of the different videos he's his feedback and all that stuff so he's quite switched on he's got 100 percent feedback from memory um but yeah like i was saying is you really need to take in consideration that people yeah you know, they're only after a product right they just basically they don't draw the connections between the two using verizon they might just think that's the brand like i said before you need to use keywords like verizon locked or pal locked or you know only playable in australia or only playable under verizon all these different things so to cover yourself from that perspective as i agree with blood sweat and tears that it's not an ipad inad per se um however you can kind of argue either way but there's my return there's my open keep it short thank you for all my subscribers love you okay so what i'll do is i'll i'll put blood sweat and tears his channel and his video underneath it was quite a quick one today um like i said i'm being unionized now so my union has told me that i am to work on sundays even though minion j has asked me to realistically i'm not too sure like, i'm the boss of the organization so i don't know how minion j gets to dictate to me what what happens in that respect but let me know in the comment section below if you agree with this inad if you like my new sound setup i have like a new microphone i'm not wearing another hat for some reason graham i don't know what you meant by that like i was going to put it on a hat or something along the lines of that i'm not too sure what you meant by that mate but i'm not wearing it on a hat um hopefully it's picking up loud and clear um but yeah but like i said let me know in the comment section below and we'll catch you next time have a good one bye